Rhythm games are pretty cool, right? I've played my fair share of them over the years. As a guy who likes listening to music, games that can challenge your sense of rhythm with great soundtracks are pretty cool. But who or what created this genre? That would be none other than Parappa the Rapper, a PS1 game developed by Na 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 Oncha, and released in late 1996 in Japan and 1997 everywhere else. It's a game about a silly little dog named Parappa who raps his way through life by having the player time button presses to six different songs. It's been credited as being the first actual rhythm game, or as the back of the box says, the original music video game. At the time, it was a big hit, and critics loved its unique gameplay and art style done by Rodney Greenblatt. A 92 on Metacritic? Fuck, that's higher than Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Ghosts of Tsushima, Spider-Man PS4, Shadow of the Colossus, Doom Eternal? You get the point now? Parappa the Rapper is a classic, alright? The international success of Parappa the Rapper led the hip-hop hero to become an iconic mascot of the PlayStation 1's brand along with Crash and Spyro. His legacy would also continue with other games like a direct sequel on the PlayStation 2 and a guitar-based spin-off titled Um Jammer Lammy which was actually released before Parappa 2 on the PS1. In 2002, he appeared in his own Japanese anime to tie into Parappa 2, but I haven't watched much of it, and in 2016, there was even an anime about one of the other characters in the Parappa universe, PJ Barry. However, these were more so shorts than full-on episodes. He also starred in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Sony's attempt at making a Smash Bros game with their characters. Kind of jarring seeing characters like Sackboy, Toro, and Parappa next to Kratos and Nathan Drake. Fun fact, the artist of the series, Rodney Greenblatt, actually wasn't too happy with Parappa making an appearance in a game with weapons like that. We actually haven't gotten a new proper Parappa the game since the release of Parappa the Rapper 2, which turns 20 years old this year in North America. We have gotten some remasters of the first game over the years, such as the PSP 1 in 2007 and the PS4 remaster in 2017 with 4K, celebrating the 10th and 20th anniversaries respectively, and Parappa 2 and Jammer Lamy have seen digital releases on the PS3 and PS4, but when it comes to new releases, the series has been vacant for quite a while. And speaking of the remasters, you'll notice that the review scores are much lower than the high praise the first one got by critics back in the day. I mean, when critiquing remasters, it's important to judge the game itself as well as the effort they put into the remastering of said game, because good games can have bad remasters and vice versa. But when they're this much lower, especially considering that these are the better versions to play of the first game, more on that later, maybe it shows that Parappa the Rapper hasn't aged that well? Um Jamer Lamy got favorable reviews in 1999 with an 83% on game rankings, even though most critics said it isn't a must-play like the first one. Parappa 2's scores were also similar to the remasters, in that they were much lower than the bar set by the PS1 Classic in 1997. Sequels are usually better than their predecessors, since they can use the experience and feedback to create a game of higher quality, but apparently that wasn't the case with Parappa 2? Well damn, maybe the entire series hasn't aged that well. Perhaps these are just relics of the past that don't hold up when compared to modern rhythm games. Well, I I first played these games around the time I got my first PlayStation, and I have some nostalgia for this series because I played games like Parappa 2 a lot as a kid, so I figured I'd write this retrospective to share why many people, including myself, have fallen in love with the series, as well as look at it through a modern lens and see if they still hold up nowadays. We have three games to cover here in brief reviews of the remasters, and I don't really plan on reviewing the anime or anything because that isn't really what I do here, but before jumping into the first game, let's talk about how Parappa came to be before he hit the store shelves. Parappa the Rapper has always been credited as pioneering the rhythm game genre because before it was released in 1996 in Japan, yeah, there weren't really a lot of music-based video games. There was the Simon Toy, this NES game that used the power pad called Dance Aerobics in 1987, and that was mostly it. Parappa's creator, Masaya Matsura, was actually part of a band at the time called Sai S. Apparently, Masaya wanted to work on interactive software like video games because he didn't like appearing in music videos, which led him to begin developing 
development of the game for the PlayStation 1 in 1994. He would also team up with Rodney Greenblatt because they both showed interest in making games for the PS1. After a mock-up was created that featured some of Rodney's pre-existing characters as paper-thin people in a 3D world, Matsura was given the idea to have all the characters be in 2D like they were cut from paper. Yeah, in all these games, its art style features paper-thin characters in a 3D environment. Realistically, it raises a lot of questions like how do 2D characters hold or even grip 3D objects, but it also gives the series a distinct art style, especially combined with Greenblatt's other vibrant and creative illustrations that are all over these games. And I love the character designs in all these games too. In fact, the name Parappa is actually a variation of the Japanese word for paper thin. The rhythm game portion came first in development, and Matsura had the idea to sample voices to create a music video game about rapping by using people's voices. The soundtrack was made using a lot of samplers, and Matsura wrote the lyrics himself in Japanese after they couldn't use entirely sampled vocals. They were translated into English by Ryu Watanabe, who would try to interpret the Japanese writing and come up with lyrics on the spot, which is interesting to think about. And at this time, the basic structure was already set in stone. As for the character designs, a few of them were actually some characters Greenblatt had already created, like PJ Barry and Katie Cat. Parappa's design took a bit of time until it was finalized. Initially, he was going to be a rapping shrimp until the concept of a dog was finalized. Matsura would give ideas for characters, so Greenblatt would design them and they'd be added to the story of the game, one of which was an onion karate master that would turn into the beloved Chop Chop Master Onion. The game game was in development for about two years, and since it was such a new type of video game that didn't fit into a specific genre, Matsura's team had trouble with qualifying Parappa as a game, and that led to some struggles in marketing. But as I've already revealed, it was a big success and would go on to become a classic in the PlayStation 1 library. So how does the first game hold up nowadays? Of course, Parappa the Rapper is a rhythm game, however, it actually has something that most rhythm games don't even have nowadays, which is a story. There are lots of cutscenes in Parappa that all contextualize all the wacky scenarios in which the levels take place. The story centers around Parappa, he's a young dog who likes to rap and wants to win over this flower named Sunny Funny, a nice and soft girl. He also has some other friends like PJ Barry who is dopey and always has food with him. I like this guy. There's also Katie Cat and she's very energetic and optimistic. The story follows Parappa and his friends but is mostly about the relationship between Parappa and Sunny because Parappa wants to hook up with Sunny. However, the main thing making his goal harder is his rival, Joe Chin. He's your typical douchey guy who is super narcissistic and is basically an asshole to Parappa since he knows he's cooler. Seeing Seeing Joe Chin do things like drive Sunny to the beach in an expensive car or defend her from bullies inspires Parappa to do the same, and try to win over her heart by exclaiming his iconic catchphrase, Yeah, I know, I gotta believe. Yeah, he says that in every single level he's in, but it's damn charming. The entire game is super charming, even though everything about it sounds silly and bizarre. A dog with a crush on a flower that wraps his way through life? Of course, that's fucking stupid, but the game knows exactly how wacky all of it is and takes advantage of that for some occasionally funny moments. The main sources of humor are usually just from the quirky scenarios in which the levels take place, honestly. Every level sees Parappa rapping alongside another teacher for whatever reason. The first level involves Parappa learning karate from Chop Chop Master Onion, a karate master with a great accent and overall I just love this guy. He's one of the most beloved characters in this series. His rap starts off pretty catchy and the beat always makes me want to bop my head, but the bulk of the lyrics are just the characters saying kick, punch, chop, because it's the tutorial level and they're exploring all the buttons on the controller. Still a good song though. For the next level, Parappa takes his driver's test after he sees Joe Chin's really nice car. The like damn, the maximum speed is tuned up to 463,000. Too long, too long. This is another iconic song with a great and catchy piano beat, and I love instructor Mussolini, who doesn't? She's strict, yet also she forgets to close the car door. Did I mention this game is super charming? In level 3, after getting his license, Parappa takes his dad's car for a spin and ends up getting in a crash so severe they get knocked out of the Earth's atmosphere, and Katie's just taking pictures of the view. He goes to a flea market to sell off his debt where he meets Prince Flea Swallow. Yeah, I'd say he's my favorite teacher in this game, even more than Chop Chop Master Onion. How can you not love lyrics like I've been working here since my mama was a baby and I meet a lot of bucks, I know I'm on the run. Implications of being a drug dealer? I love this game. Also, he goes from saying, 
all you ever need is to be nice and friendly. Money, money, money is all you need. Through his business, he becomes more and more corrupt. Am I playing Parappa the Rapper or Persona 5? Or am I watching Breaking Bad? So in stage 4, Parappa and his friends plan out a birthday party for Sonny Funny, and Parappa is tasked with getting a cake. They also played John Ken, and for some reason it wasn't translated into a rock, paper, scissors, so this confused me when I was a kid. He buys one until Joe Chin shows up, shows off his cake with like 40,000 floors, then pushes Parappa over and fucks up his cake. He turns to Cheap Cheap's cooking show to make a sea food cake for Sunny. I kind of like Cheap Cheap's character. She acts calm, but if you fuck up at all during her rap, then she'll get super pissed off and come out of the TV to scold you. She's just very expressive and sassy, and the song is catchy. I like it. She can also go fuck off, but we'll talk about that later. After making the cake, they have the party with Sunny, but Parappa ends up having too much cake and it upsets his stomach. And in the middle of his alone time with Sunny, he really needs to take a shit. So he drives with her to the gas station, but Sunny actually thinks Parappa is acting super mad mainly when he needs to go. At the gas station, he encounters all four of his previous teachers who apparently also need to use the bathroom, and he must rap his way through all of them. I love the beat, I love the way in which it remixes the lyrics from previous songs, and of course, the premise is really silly, but I love it. If you fail the song, then it plays a video of a rocket launching in Parappa's stomach. And for the last level, Parappa is invited to a nightclub and brings Sunny Funny along with him for a date. The cutscene before stage 6 is basically a music video of the two getting invited and stuff, and it has this cheesy love song playing about the relationship of Parappa and Sunny. It's not one of my favorites, but admittedly, this song is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. I kind of like it, okay? I did like how it uses the light motif from the title screen. But the real level begins when Parappa is brought onto the stage to rap alongside his previous teachers, as well as MC King Kong Mushi, this guy. He's a chill dude, but doesn't really stick out, unlike the rest of the instructors you meet. But I like this stage a lot. It just feels like a nice conclusion to the story, with Parappa going on stage in front of Sunny and rapping for her. And the song even features his catchphrase. He even has his own bars instead of repeating his teachers, and at the end, you get to freestyle. However, it does come out of the blue, so it'll catch newbies off guard. Especially since you cannot see what's coming at all. That's the story, and yeah, I like it. It's not anything deep, it's very cartoony and silly, but the game takes advantage of that to be very wacky and charming. I like a lot of the characters too, like Parappa, Chop Chop Master Runyon, PJ Berry, Prince Lee Swallow, and Joe Chin. But we should discuss the gameplay, since that is where Parappa the Rapper mainly innovated back in the 90s. It's quite simple, you just input the correct button sequences in time with the rhythm. First, you'll hear the instructor sing it, then you'll have to make Parappa rap along with them. But unlike rhythm games today where you just push buttons along with a song, you actually have to make Parappa rap a rap the song because all the buttons in the sequence are tied to a word or syllable, so making Parappa's lyrics flow well and sound good is all up to you. Even compared to rhythm games today, this is still an interesting way of doing things, since most of them just make you tap buttons along with the pre-recorded song, and on top of that, they usually don't contextualize the gameplay at all, since they usually just give you a list of songs with no story or anything. I mean, I don't want every rhythm game to have a story or anything, this works just fine, but Parappa's way of contextualizing the genre genre makes it distinctive and unique. However, this simple act is not perfect because, in a way, the timing can feel a little off, mainly with this bar at the top of the screen. You'd think you would have to time it whenever Parappa is aligned with the button, but that feels delayed, and I wouldn't suggest doing that if you play the game since you'll notice that it sounds off. I recommend just taking note of the buttons and the distance between them to accurately rap rather than just thinking about the visual indicator. To be fair, I can say that about most rhythm games, but compared to those, Parappa can feel a little unpolished in that aspect, since even those don't have issues with inaccurate visuals. At least you can practice in the menus though. The game rates your timing with this meter to the side, by telling you that you're either rapping good, bad, awful, or cool. We'll discuss the latter in a minute. This is the main source of difficulty throughout Parappa, since to clear a song you have to finish it with a good rating, and also the music can change a little bit when your rating gets worse, with some cartoony sound effects added in there. 
Sometimes it takes away instruments though, so the normal version is always better in my opinion. The environment around you can change as well, with Parappa endangering himself and Mussolini with his driving, as well as the audience just leaving your show since you're so damn offbeat. I wouldn't really call Parappa the Rapper a difficult rhythm game. I like to think I'm pretty good at rhythm games and usually the sequences here don't get too complex. However, sometimes the game can feel strict for the wrong reasons. Everyone who's played this game knows exactly what I'm talking about. Fucking Cheap Cheap's cooking show is such a broken level. I like the song, I think it's catchy, and I kinda like how sassy Cheap Cheap herself is, but the timing throughout the song feels unfair and just broken. Like, listen to this. What was wrong with that, bro? Of course, your rhythm will never be extremely perfect, but the other songs know that, and this one doesn't. It feels inconsistent too. Sometimes when I'm playing this game, I can do it in like two tries, or it'll take like 20 minutes. It can get quite frustrating since I barely do anything differently. I'm just under the game's corrupted sense of mercy. This fourth level right here is where my casual runs of this game go to die. But there is another aspect I haven't mentioned yet, and that is cool mode. On your first playthrough you can't activate it at all, but once you beat the game and go back to replay some of the songs you can access it. However, cool mode acts much differently than the other ratings, since it isn't really about accuracy this time. While the game does give you a sequence to input, you're technically allowed to kind of freestyle and remix the lyrics a little bit. If you're able to remix the song to the game's liking, it can throw you into cool mode, where your instructor leaves you and you get to freestyle using some bars from the song. But you cannot just push random buttons because the game will usually detect that and possibly throw you back into a good rating, sometimes. Cool mode also gives you a much higher score. To maintain your cool rating, I recommend just reciting any part of the song you like, but stay on rhythm. Sometimes getting cool mode can actually be really easy, like in the first level. With simple ass charting like this, it's basically begging you to just button mash and get cool mode. Some songs don't really give you much leeway, like in stage 3 with its rapid button combos, and stage 4, well, surviving with a good rating is enough of a challenge, so you can imagine how long it took me at first, but hey, on this playthrough I did it first try. Uh, someone please give me a compliment. Cool mode can add some nice replay value since you can remix the songs and experiment with the lyrics, but the key to nailing it consistently can feel inconsistent. What the game considers cool or not cool just feels off. I mean, any replay value is nice for a rhythm game with six songs. Yeah, you only get six. This is a really short game. You do get a reward for getting cool mode on every stage. You get this music video or whatever where you get to watch Sunny and Katie dance and you can like change their clothes and move the camera. Yeah, this is kind of a boring reward, but you can 100% this game in like an hour and a half at most. And even then, my console couldn't boot it up for some reason. Actually, fuck it, yeah, it was my emulator. I already own this game physically. I paid $77 to use the word emulator, okay? I earned this! While there may be only six songs to play, at the very least, I'm glad the soundtrack is super catchy. It's hard to resist bopping your head or singing along while rapping in this game. And that's great for a game all about music. Structurally, they are a little weird to listen to since Parappa always repeats his teachers, and you know, most songs don't say each lyric twice, but uh, that's what you get for listening to video game music, I guess. I still love all the tracks in this game though, whether it be the upbeat piano in Mussolini's rap, the funky, funky flow in Flea Swallow stage, or the party vibes you get from Parappa's performance at the nightclub. So, has Parappa the Rapper aged well? Not really. Well, I still think the game is super charming with the characters and the great soundtrack, and rapping alongside these catchy songs can be really fun, but nowadays you can notice some quirks with the timing. It does not ruin the game or anything, it just takes a bit of time to get used to it, and on stage 4 it can actually get pretty frustrating. <laughs> Graphically, it aged well due to the choice to make the characters flat. Most 5th gen character models look very clunky, but these are good. And so are the creative character designs. Besides the strict timing, the main issue I have with this game is just the lack of content. Even if it was 1997, it only has 6 levels and you can beat the main story in under an hour. Maybe an hour and a half at most if you go for 100% completion. Even back then, it was brought up as criticism for the game, but it was still receiving 9s out of 10s because of how unique and innovative it was. I still think the 
game is solid, like a 6 out of 10. But the main reason it doesn't receive that much high praise nowadays is because it isn't this super innovative game anymore, so you can notice some flaws. It still manages to be one of the most unique rhythm games out there, but it's also very simplistic and doesn't have much content. Personally, I like this game, partly because of nostalgia, but also because there's a lot of charm here, and the rhythm aspect is still kind of fun due to the catchy as hell songs. I wouldn't recommend paying a lot for this game because you wouldn't really get that much bang for your buck, but it's worth emulating or something to experience this unique game. The game has aged, but I can still enjoy it. Because some aspects like the writing and the soundtrack still hold up in my opinion. <laughs> Uh -huh. As stated in the intro, Parappa the Rapper would go on to receive two revisions of the game, one for the PSP in 2007 and another for the PS4 in 2017. Both versions are pretty similar, so I won't talk about them for long. In fact, the PS4 remaster is emulating the PSP version with high-res textures. The PS4 version has Ultra 4K because that obviously makes a big difference in a game like Parappa. It looks more vibrant, which is nice. The cutscenes aren't in 4K or anything, they actually still look quite sloppy when it comes to the resolution, but I'm guessing it was because they were pre-rendered, so they just upscaled them the best they could. Graphically, the PS4 version is the best, but it doesn't really matter across the board. What does matter is whether or not the gameplay was fixed, since the meter at the top felt very delayed in the PS1 version. Actually, in the PSP version, it feels just right. I never have any unfair issues with timing, and in fact, I beat Cheap Cheap on my first try, and I don't even think I dropped down to a bad rating. I even tested it on original hardware, and it felt just fine. But with the PS4 version, I have had some trouble with the timing in this stage, just like the PS1 version. The bar at the top feels in sync, and they also make Parappa's icon bounce whenever you hit a button so you can see how your timing was. But playing all three versions back to back kind of made me realize there is some slight input delay. Like the PS1 version just had weird visuals. In this version, the timing actually is slightly off, but you can practice it and get used to it. You'll find the PS4 version is easier to play once you get used to it, because it has additions like being able to see the beat at the top, or feel the beat with controller vibrations. The PSP version also had downloadable remixes for the songs, but these are built into the PS4 version. They don't change the lyrics or the button mapping, it's just the beat that's different. And some are quite drastically different, like in Stage 2. Cheap Cheap even gets this rock remix, which is fitting for how hard it can be to get right. I wouldn't really say any of these are better than the original tracks, but these are fun to play every now and then. And it's more content for a game that was lacking in replayability, so that isn't bad. The PSP version, even even had wireless multiplayer with up to four players where you can play with each other to compete for the highest score. So basically, whoever is the best at getting cool mode quickly wins. I never got to experience this, but I guess it's neat. So, which version should you go after? Well, you can easily emulate the PSP version, but the PS4 version is 15 bones digitally. In fact, I don't even think the PS4 remaster got a physical release outside of Japan. 15 bucks is kind of a lot for a game that you can fully beat in less than two hours, but if you want to, then go ahead. You might enjoy all the charm the game has to offer, and the gameplay has been polished up a little. This version also has trophies, and since this game is so short, it's a really easy platinum if you're into hunting those. It's not like the PS4 version is much better than the PSP version, so you could just emulate the PSP edition. Both versions do a decent job at remastering the game, especially because of how they fix my biggest gripe with that game, the delayed timing. So, after Parappa the Rapper ended up being a huge success, Sony wanted Matsura to create a direct sequel, however he opted to make a spin-off, which of course turned into Um Jammer Lamy. The main factors that make this a spin-off are the new protagonist and the switch from rap music to rock. The idea of playing the guitar came up during the first game's development, so they decided to reuse that idea, although Greenblatt was very doubtful. They had a larger team during development, and since it was released in 1999, you can see the production values have generally increased, the cutscenes are a higher resolution and are more smooth overall, and you can just smell the compression. But anyways, let's take a look at Um Jammer Lamy. How does it hold up as a spin-off to the classic that was Parappa the Rapper? It starts off pretty familiar to Parappa actually. The crew was watching Jet Baby, like a sequel or something. They go to the same fast food restaurant and even see the same geeky ass bullies. But of course, the main difference here is just the characters. Our protagonist is Lamy, a lamb who is pretty different from Parappa since she's quite shy and not very confident in herself, unlike Parappa who is very 
very outgoing. She's able to express herself when she's playing the guitar though, since she is part of a band called Milk Can along with Katie Cat from the first game and Masan. Masan doesn't really do anything, she talks in gibberish and is apparently really strong but we don't really see her that much. The story actually begins with Lamy having a dream where she arrives at her concert to see Chop Chop Master Onion as the band's new vocalist. As I said, it starts things off pretty familiar, and I also liked seeing him return here. The first song even shares a similar melody to his rap in the first game. And here we're acquainted with a slightly different gameplay. Not much has changed gameplay wise, time your button inputs with the rhythm of the song. Really the main difference is just that you're playing the guitar. Honestly I do feel like connecting the beats together with guitar riffs is a little harder than rapping. Not to dunk on this game's soundtrack or anything, but I feel like sometimes it just sounds like noise. Maybe it's the compression or something, but it can throw me off sometimes. At least the bar at the top is much more reliable when it comes to timing. Most of the time when I get knocked down to a bad or awful rating, it usually feels like my fault. Although it can feel strict at times, but never in an unfair way. It also displays how long your turn will be, so the game can't catch you off guard anymore whenever a verse is a little shorter. Cool mode works the exact same, but I feel like this time you can get it more reliably since there are lots of times where the game will give you a big gap between lines, so then you can just play your heart out. But freestyling is much more interesting than having a guitar solo. The most notable difference can be seen in the charting because this game is actually much harder. The sequences are just much more complex than test your reflexes. Like look at stage 3 in Parappa and compare it to stage 3 of Jammer Lammy. Parappa 1 was a comfortable experience besides the few bits of jank that just made it unfair, but Jammer Lammy will test your rhythm game skills much more, and I think the rhythm aspect is more enjoyable. So overall I think Jammer Lammy is more fun to play because it's more challenging, and doesn't feel as off in the timing department, however I still think that connecting rap lyrics has a much better flow than playing the guitar. Let's get back to the story in this game though. After the first level in her dream, she notices that she was actually playing with a vacuum cleaner because it's a dream, weird shit like that happens I guess. Lammy being Lammy gets all embarrassed and laments on how she's nothing without her guitar, but Chop Chop Master Onion gives her inspirational words of advice by saying that he lost his dojo but it still lives on in his mind. It even has a casino, thus the quote, Dojo, dojo casino, casino, it's all in the mind, mind was born. Then Lammy wakes up and realizes that she only has 15 minutes until an actual concert. She grabs her stuff and begins running through the street to make it in time. And the rest of the story is basically about Lammy getting into a lot of wacky shenanigans while on her way to her concert. And yet, obviously it goes on for more than 15 minutes. This game actually took me a little less than an hour to beat, but it's still longer than the last game since there are like 7 songs instead of 6. Also, instead of Parappa's I Gotta Believe, we get... I don't think Lamy's catchphrase has as much charm. And also, to boost her confidence in these situations, she uses Chop Chop Master Runyon's words of wisdom to pretend that her guitar is in her mind. She uses lots of weird things as a substitute guitar, like a hose, a chainsaw, a living baby, and even a guitar? And you know, something you'll realize is how the story in this game is much more trippy. You can tell they were going for more of a psychedelic direction, which is kind of fitting because the first game was pretty goofy at times, but this is on a whole other level of fever dream. Like, Lammy helps put out a burning building, then eats a lot of pizza and gets fat, and this gross-ass caterpillar nurse mistakes her for a pregnant woman, but then makes her help put babies to sleep by playing the guitar because she wasn't actually pregnant, which literally makes no sense by the way, like how does that make them sleepy? Then she slips on a skateboard and is launched into a plane flying through the street, and she meets this guy named Captain Foos and Pepper, and I actually like him. I didn't think the last two characters were anything to write home about. Chief Puddle is a little charming since he cares more about the pizza than the burning building, but Nurse Kathy Pillar just makes me say... Poos and Pepper is pretty funny since he's constantly switching from this calm and naive guy with an IQ of 10 to a super angry and strict sergeant that's constantly yelling. I think he's funny. I miss my brain. May I help you? Once she lands, Lamy realizes that she left her guitar on the plane and she has to go buy a new one from this dude named Paul Chuck. This moment is kind of funny. I'll do anything, anything, please. 
I'd say his personality is more interesting than the first two, but I also just don't think this level is that interesting as a whole. Okay, so this is when things get really weird. When Lammy is leaving the store with her new guitar, her belt gets stuck on the doorknob and she gets sent flying all the way to this remote island, and we get this somewhat creepy sequence with lots of distortion, and it just feels like it's right out of a creepypasta. Speaking of creepypasta in the Japanese slash European versions of Um Jammer Lammy, instead of the remote island shit, Lammy slips on a banana peel and straight up fucking dies and goes to hell. What the fuck? It even rolls the credits because they think they're funny. Honestly, I prefer the Japanese cutscene because it's so fucking surprising that I love it. Like, you're telling me this guy went from writing about a dog who raps to a guitarist that dies and goes to hell? Also, what did Lamy do to go to hell? Both scenarios still result in Lamy being mistaken for another guitarist, so she ends up playing at a concert for this idol, Teriyaki Yoko. I like this song and I kinda like how sadistic she is, but this level is also fucking hard and gets really intense right at the end. After the concert, Insert Lamy is brought back to Earth using a fax machine. I guess it's because all the characters are paper thin. She also briefly runs into Rami, who's like her evil twin or something. I think she was the original guitarist that Yoko mistook Lamy for, but she's also not really that relevant. And finally, Lamy makes it to her concert and sees that the other members also had lots of troubles that caused them to be late. Do you think Masan and Katie also went to hell for a little bit? The last stage occurs during Milk Can's proper concert, which is pretty fun, but after that, the game just ends and the credits roll. I mean, it's a fitting conclusion conclusion, but no cutscene or anything. I at least like the credits music a lot. Oh yeah, Masan also destroys an entire museum by trying to kill a fly. I don't know why, but this cutscene just plays after the credits. The story in Um Jimmy Lamy is definitely pretty wacky, kinda like its predecessor, but it leans into more of a psychedelic drug trip than a cartoony story. Some characters are cool, like Lamy, Katie is alright, Captain Foos and Pepper and Paul Chuck are pretty funny, and of course, Chop Chop Master Runyon is great, but honestly, I feel like the first game story just had more charm. It had its weird moments, but those would usually give me a good laugh, rather than just saying, some parts can be pretty funny, but overall, I prefer the charm and characters in Parappa 1's story. Once again, the soundtrack is great. I love all the songs in this game, and I think rock music is pretty cool, so I'm on board with this new change. And they incorporate different types of rock, too. Some of my favorites are Chop Chop Master Runyon's groovy song, Captain Foos and Pepper's headbanging rock tune where it's switching from a fast pace to a slower pace, and Milk Can's concert performance because it's just really catchy. I do get a kick out of the others, like the rapid and wild level with the caterpillar lady, the funky song in stage 2 while you're putting out a fire, and they also say fuck. Um, actually, they are saying with the funk and not what the fuck. <laughs> as well as Teriyaki Yoko's concert in Hell. Stage 5 is alright, I just don't think it's that memorable music-wise, but I don't dislike it, it's fine. But what if I told you that Jammer Lamy has both rock and rap? So once you beat Lamy's campaign in like an hour or less, you begin to unlock Parappa versions of each stage except for the first one, where you can rap as Parappa with slightly different lyrics and hip-hop remixes of all the songs. Some sound quite different, like Stage 4, where they're grooving to the beat instead of headbanging. It also retains Lamy's difficulty and feels kind of harder for most levels, but stage 3 is a little lighter on the button mashing. Parappa's stages even come with new cutscenes, but they don't really relate to the story. They're mostly just about Parappa and his gang having fun and doing some stuff. These can be pretty funny too. I'd say even more so than the main campaign. Stage 5's cutscene even shows an ad about Joe Chin's nature preservation donation program, as well as selling products like chainsaws to cut down trees. Even Paul Chuck thinks he's a dick, but I also really love how funny he is in this game. These stages also have names like On Monday and On Wednesday, so does that mean rapping in hell is just another normal Thursday for Parappa? You can also unlock multiplayer modes where you can play co-op or versus with Rami or Parappa by your side. I guess it's neat to play these along with a friend, but who thinks of playing rhythm games when multiplayer is being discussed? Regardless, I still really enjoy Parappa's remixes. This is the kind of worthwhile replay value that the first game was kinda lacking. Even if they are remixes, they're still pretty different, so you get 13 tracks to replay. You can also experiment with some freestyles, aim for cool mode, or play with a friend. Also, I didn't really aim for cool mode in every stage, so I'm not sure if there's a reward for doing so, but I feel like I would have already known if there is one there. But it is a rhythm game, I don't really think it needs a reward for 100% completion, they just need to have decent replayability.
So, is Um Jammer Lamy a worthwhile spinoff? Yeah, I actually like it more than Parappa 1. I will admit that game had more charm, but Lamy's game has more interesting gameplay and much more content to make you come back and replay some songs, including hip-hop remixes featuring Parappa, so you're really getting the best of both worlds here. And because of that, I actually enjoy this game's soundtrack more. This game has aged better than the first game, since the gameplay doesn't really have any moments of jank, but I can understand why some may prefer the first game over this one. It has charm this this game can't match, even with its decent cast of characters, and maybe you just prefer rap over rock. Even if it's not a direct sequel, I still think it improved in a lot of areas, and I like this game more overall. Not gonna lie, it's kinda interesting how they made a spin-off before the direct sequel, but whatever. We got Parappa the Rapper 2 in early 2002, but it was released in August of 2001 in Japan. As I said in the introduction, Parappa 2 was met with lower review scores than its predecessor. Most critics cited it as a lack of innovation, but isn't that what sequels are all about though? Innovation? Let's see how good of a job Parappa 2 does when it comes to being a sequel and just being a quality title. Once again, the game opens with the gang watching a movie with the same monster from Jet Baby. This also serves no real purpose once again. The monster does shoot noodles and come out of the screen because it's Parappa's dream, but the rest of the cutscene establishes how Parappa actually hates noodles. Basically, he won a lifelong supply of noodle products at a burger shop and he's grown sick of them. And Sunny Funny definitely isn't helping by cooking noodles for the millionth time. I know. I got it. I got it. No. I can't believe. So Parappa, being the man he is, just dips with PJ. I think Sunny hates me now. Of course he does. He didn't eat her cooking. Damn, PJ. They go to a burger shop known for beard burgers because... I guess Parappa is American. Actually, no, it's a Parappa town tradition. Most people make jokes about how he did some pretty mundane shit last game and got a town named after him, but I think it's because Parappa means paper thin in Japanese and everyone in the town is paper thin. It's funny to think about though, he drove a car, sold bottle caps, took a shit, and got a town named after him. But back at the restaurant, all the food is turning into noodles. Oh yeah, and they also bring back the ghost of the restaurant's deceased owner and he shows Parappa how to cook burgers and it's a great intro song. I love the Beard Burger Master accent too, it's great. Let's discuss the gameplay briefly because once again, not much is different. Listen to your instructor lay some bars down, and you have to time the button sequences to the song or try to freestyle and get cool mode. Speaking of cool mode, it's a little wacky in this game because I straight up had times where I did not freestyle at all and still got rewarded with cool mode. I don't even think cool mode is that cool since you're basically just mashing random buttons. I'd much rather just play along with the instructor because the music is much better. This also goes for like every Parappa game. I kind of wish there was an option to maybe disable cool mode, since when you get to some of the more difficult remixes, then the game will just assume you're freestyling and you can get cool mode. Difficulty wise, I don't think it's as hard as Jammer Lamy, but I believe it's because this game feels more forgiving. The core gameplay may not be that different, like at all, but it's at least more refined than even Um Jammer Lamy. This is mainly because you leave a stamp on the bar at the top whenever you press a button, so you can see exactly how good your timing was. So whenever you lose some points, you can understand why. Even in Jammer Lamy, it was hard to tell how precise it wanted you to be. The only bullshit throughout like the entire game is at the very end of the last song, where Parappa once again has to rap and hype up the crowd and you straight up can't see it coming at first. They also added these meters on the bottom and for years I had no idea what they mean. Even most reviews I see on YouTube have no clue. However, that Parappa wiki says that the meter represents how well you imitate your teacher's lines, how well you are freestyling, or how much swing your rap has. I don't really get what the last one means though. It's pretty meaningless to be honest. Like wow, so innovative. And oh yeah, in between cutscenes for every song, you have to do this practice mode with Boxy Boy, a character that was apparently in the first game but had no lines, he just existed. You can skip these, but you can't skip the cutscene of Boxy Boy itself, so it gets irritating fast. And like, the number of times it expects you to practice the same lines over and over again is insane, dude. Most people don't know this, but you can actually hold L1 and L2 when selecting a level to load 
right into the song and not have to skip cutscenes, it comes in handy. There's also this mini game with Chop Chop Master Runyon, the game makes you play after like every other level you complete, which also gets annoying, but you can skip this one even faster. Well, when it comes to the rhythm game aspect of this game, yeah, not much has changed. It's refined, but it's still not that much different than its predecessors. To be fair, neither was Lammy, it just had a different musical genre. I guess I could see how this game had a lack of innovation, gameplay wise. They could have added more types of notes, maybe like hold notes or double notes, but eh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this was also 2001. I still like the gameplay since it's fun for the same reasons it was in the previous games, especially combined with the soundtrack. It's also really good once again. All the songs will make you want to rap along with Parappa, and I think they have a good variety when it comes to how they sound, the premises of the level, and the teachers that rap along with Parappa. I love how funky some stages are, like stage 1 and stage 5, and they also enjoy the smoother ones, like stage 2 and 3. My favorite has to be stage 7. It probably leans the most into hip-hop, and I'm all for it, it's catchy as hell. But to be fair, I think every song is very catchy and memorable. I also feel like this game features more variety in the songs. You have more relaxed songs, and even a chiptune level. <laughs> Let's get back to the story. Basically, the plot is about Parappa and his gang trying to stop the Noodle Syndicate from trying to take over the world with noodles. That's why all the food at the burger shop was turning into noodles. Parappa and the gang discover it was because of an unreleased video game where if you lose, you can only eat noodles for the rest of your life. So death. The Noodle Syndicate leader's name is Colonel Noodle, and yes, he is the son of the Beard Burger Master. He even has a villain backstory. Growing up, he ate nothing but burgers and grew sick of them. His mom even ate so many that she turned into one, which is pretty funny. But he did always love noodles, so now he wants to take over the world with noodles. It's very silly, but that's exactly what I expect in a Parappa game. Parappa saves the day by having a rap battle with him, and instead of copying what he says, he kinda switches things up by talking about sweets instead of noodles. This class is also why stage 7 is my favorite level. The cast of characters in this game is pretty good too. I love all the teachers in this game, like Instructor Musatia, who's actually the sister of Mussolini from the first game, and even references or lines. <laughs> The crazy hairdresser octopus because I love his accent and he's goofy as hell. As well as Guru Ant. He's so smooth and relaxing, but gets super freaked out when you grow big later in the level. He's pretty funny. Chop Chop Master Runyon is even in this game again, but this time he runs a fitness show about romantic karate. And this entire level is hilarious, honestly. Stare right to eye as we poke each other's eyeballs out. The main cast has changed a little. Not only Katie, but the entirety of Milk Can is reduced to mostly cameos. But Ma San's role in level 3 is pretty funny. Also, Katie's new voice makes her feel like a totally different character. Hey, don't forget, we are Milk Can! Because we are Milk Can! PJ is even funnier than in the first game, I love him. We also get to see Parappa's dad and Sonny's dad more, since they are working alongside Parappa to stop the Noodle Syndicate. Sonny isn't that prominent in most of the events since Parappa ran away in the first cutscene, and this entire game kinda has a message about growing up, which is first shown when Sonny calls Parappa a baby for not eating noodles. I mean, dry ass noodles aren't very good, so I don't blame Parappa, but he's doing all these things like getting military training, watching romantic karate because it's strictly for adults, and saving the world from noodles because he wants to become a real man for Sonny. We even get all these flashbacks of some wacky shit basically about him not being able to impress Sonny since he isn't grown up apparently. My favorite is this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is great fun! Yeah, definitely not for kids. Yes, yeah, such an adult joke, right guys? <laughs> By the end of the game, when they're having another party with this guy, Sonny tells Parappa that since he never gave up throughout the game, he's already a grown-up, but I guess that's a good message. Apparently she was watching him for like the entire game. How do you think she felt when she saw this? Out of all three games, I think Parappa 2 has the greatest story. I love how goofy and quirky everything is, and the writing is really funny too. There's a lot of jokes that make me laugh. All the characters add a lot of charm, and compared to the other games, this one even has a message that's explored. It's not like a literary masterpiece or anything, but for what it is, it does a really good job at everything it tries to do. It may have a bigger emphasis on the story and a much bigger scope, but this game still only clocks in at less than 90 minutes when it comes to the main quest with 8 stages. Since this is a rhythm game, you'll want to come back every now and then to replay some songs, and this game does do a good job with replayability. Once you beat the game, Parappa's beanie goes from orange to blue. Playing the game with the blue hat adds some little lyric variations and it remixes things to make it a bit harder. And once you clear every song with the blue hat, you'll also get the pink hat, which increases the difficulty even more. The last hat 
hat you'll unlock is the yellow hat, but you can actually unlock a secret difficulty slider with this hat. The game never tells you this, but on the stage select, you can hold R3 and tilt the stick up for an easy remix or down for a hard remix. These remixes can increase the difficulty a lot by having a much faster pace and more complex charting. However, I can still do most of these on my first try. They can also sound pretty odd sometimes. As I said earlier, these remix charts make cool mode much easier to achieve, and once you do that, you'll get a little crown on top of the level. You can stack up to four of them, and once you beat the game with the yellow hat, you can unlock this record shop where you can listen to the soundtrack. You know, if you just didn't want to play the game. To even unlock a record, you have to beat that song with a cool rating with the yellow hat on, so if you want to go for 100%, then you better start collecting those yellow crowns. You can also listen to the full version of Sunny's cheesy love song from the last level. And speaking of which, I like this more than the one from Parappa 1. The last disc is unlocked by beating every AI on the hardest difficulty in the versus mode. Multiplayer returns from Jamer Lamy, and I think Parappa 2 handles it much better. Player 2 was actually the instructor, so instead of just taking turns playing the song normally, you're constantly going back and forth with each other and you have to play better than them. And if the game likes your freestyle a lot, it'll change the sequence to yours so you can make things get much more heated. The best part is how every teacher has their own sound when you press the wrong button. <laughs> fun to play with a friend every now and then, but as I said earlier, I don't immediately jump to rhythm games and multiplayer is being discussed, but still, it can lead to some laughs, and just playing against the hardest AIs can add some replay value, since to get the last disc in the record shop, you have to beat every level 4 AI. You get this gangster rap song done by De La Soul, and it's pretty catchy, I like it. You can hear it if you wait long enough in the title screen, but I don't think it'll play the full version, unlike the record shop. And that's Parappa the Rapper 2. I think this game is quite good. Honestly, I believe this game does does everything better than Parappa the Rapper 1, from the writing, the gameplay, the music, and the content it offers. Yeah, the game is still quite simplistic with only 8 songs, and while most rhythm games nowadays have dozens to choose from, I'd say it makes up for it with its charming and comedic story to tie it all together and Parappa's unique mechanics, mainly how you're completely in control of Parappa's vocals so you can freestyle and have fun. It's not a masterpiece, but I really enjoy playing this game because it's honestly one of the most charming games I have ever played. It's 10 bucks on the PlayStation Store and I'd say that's not a bad price considering how this is a short game. But back to the main criticism of Parappa 2, the lack of innovation. Well, considering how Um Jamer Lamy came before this game and fixed the issues I had with the timing in Parappa 1, it doesn't really do that much to innovate. It has a bigger scope and refines the Parappa formula to deliver a game that I love, but as a sequel, yeah, I guess it is kinda lacking. It also doesn't have any substantial new post-game content like the Parappa remixes in Jamer Lamy. It has lots and lots of remixes of the main songs, but I miss how cool this entirely new campaign was. I still like it more than Jammer Lamy though, because this game has a charm that Lamy cannot match. If you want a unique and quirky rhythm game that has a super catchy soundtrack, then you'll love Parappa the Rapper 2. So, in the end, have these three games aged well? Some more than others, but overall, not really? The first Parappa game aged the worst out of all of them, because nowadays you could notice how the timing has some imperfections and it's lacking in content. In 1997, yes, this game basically created an entirely new genre, so it was met with very high praise, but nowadays you can see how it isn't this 92 out of 100 game that everyone used to think it was. I still somewhat enjoy it for the charm, cartoony art direction, and memorable soundtrack. The spin-off, Um Jammer Lamy, actually tops the first game for me, since I love the soundtrack even more, and the gameplay is really fun and doesn't really have any issues. It even has pretty good replay value. However, this one is lacking in charm that the first game had, with its world of quirky characters. I just don't like the story as much, and the world isn't as vibrant, it's more psychedelic I guess. The sequel, Parappa the Rapper 2, does everything better than the first game, and I love it, it's a great game. It doesn't innovate that much as a sequel, and you could argue that Um Jammer Lemmy has more replay value, but this one is my favorite because I love the soundtrack, the gameplay, the characters, and it is replayable. I loved replaying this game the most as a kid, so that means something, right? I even met some friends that I still know to this day because of Parappa, no joke. This series means a lot to me. It has some of the most charm I've ever seen in a video game, and it's a very unique rhythm game with catchy SL soundtracks and goofy stories that'll bring you a fun time. But while I do like the series a lot, critics stopped thinking highly of Parappa when they got to Parappa 2. Since the appeal of this revolutionary game wore off and it was just a simple rhythm game, I think most of the games are good or at the very least decent, but overall the series didn't age that well. And Parappa probably wouldn't survive today since by Parappa 2, critics were getting tired of the formula, and it's kinda hard to innovate with a series that's about 
pressing buttons to the beat of some catchy songs. Overall, it just stopped being a new concept and he became a relic of the past. The series appeals to me, but looking at it critically, these games are pretty simplistic rhythm games with bits of charm. We've gotten remasters, but we haven't gotten a proper game in 20 years, so it's safe to assume this franchise is kinda dead. Could they have gone anywhere with a new game? Honestly, I don't really think so. Um, Jamie Lamy and Parappa 2 refined the formula, but didn't add much. I'm not really sure what else they could add besides like a different type of button notes or something. And the reception of those games shows us that there aren't really much more places that the series can go. The creator hasn't really expressed interest in making another installment, and the supposed spiritual successor to Parappa, Project Rap Rabbit, got cancelled in 2017 after a failed Kickstarter. From what was shown, it looked kind of confusing though. Do I want another game? Yeah, I won't lie, it would be cool, but I'm satisfied with the three games we got out of this series because I can find some enjoyment in these, some more than others. Overall, the series didn't age that well because its luster as this revolutionary game that pioneered the rhythm game genre wore off, and its sequels were received more negatively because of that. And while I personally like these games for all the reasons I explored throughout this retrospective, yeah, it's safe to say these games aren't really worth 92 out of 100s anymore. It's kind of like Super Mario 64, for example. This game was mind-blowing when it came out because of how it revolutionized an entire genre, but nowadays, since it isn't that new and innovative, you can notice some flaws due to its age. Speaking of which, that's the subject of the next video, so stay tuned for that and I'll see y'all later. Vitamin D with the title hooking it up, speed quick like noodles to cut. It ain't nothing for the one man button to move something. Running par rap through laps, huddling rags. Just when you thought your game was dead.